So in this uh, video, we're going to look at the inverse of a matrix. So the inverse of a matrix, uh, a matrix A, the inverse of a matrix A is could be some matrix. If we can find a matrix B such that the product AB is the same as BA, and actually is the identity matrix of appropriate size, then the ma this magic matrix B um, is referred to as the inverse of the matrix A. So um, we say then that A is invertible. Okay, we say it's invertible. Uh, and also we can say it's or, we can say or non-singular. As opposed to being singular. So if the inverse of the matrix or this B, this magic B does not exist, then we say that A is in fact singular. So uh, one, uh, two important points to keep in mind. First of all, the inverse of a matrix um, is the equivalent idea of division, um, which is the only operation we've not really looked at so far. We have looked at multiplication, addition, subtraction, scalar multiplication of a matrix, but we have not looked at division. So this is the concept of division, in fact. Um, but important to keep in mind is there are no fractions uh, in um, matrix algebra. So you cannot have one matrix on another. So it's can, you cannot have A over B, for instance. However, uh, if I go back now just to the inverse, so the inverse of a matrix is represented by this um, minus 1 power, uh, which in fact is more symbolic than being a power because minus 1 power means 1 over A usually in algebra. It does not apply to matrices. So please don't um, don't say this is the same as 1 over A. That's absolutely not okay. Um, there is no such thing as 1 over a matrix. We don't have um, fractions when it comes to matrices. So anyway, so the inverse of a matrix A is that um, it's, it, this, it's that interesting matrix that when multiplied by A itself, um, first of all, it's commutative. So uh, this is the basic definition of the inverse of a matrix. It is that matrix which, when multiplied by the target matrix, gives you the identity matrix. Uh, if the now also an important point to keep in mind is the inverse only exists for square matrices. So only for square matrices. Okay. So a matrix has to be square for its inverse to exist. Secondly, uh, as we said, that the term non-singular and invertible indicate that the opposite. Uh, may be possible, which means singular or not invertible. Um, and that is, in fact, possible. Not all matrices, or whether, uh, not all square matrices have an inverse. A matrix can be singular, which means its inverse does not exist. So it's important to keep these ideas in mind. Next thing we look at is how do we actually compute the inverse of a matrix, of a square matrix? Well, I'm going to show you this in like a flowchart um, sort of algorithm. If you were to form the augmented matrix where A is your target matrix, a square matrix, I is the appropriate sized identity matrix. So if this is A n by n, then this would be I n by n. Now what you do is you basically perform row operations, elementary row operations on A n to convert it, to bring it to reduced row echelon form where there are no row of zeros. Now you know that if there are no row of zeros in reduced in RREF, then the matrix must be the identity. So your target is to see if the matrix A can be made into the identity matrix performing elementary row operations. If you are successful in doing that, then performing those same row operations on the identity matrix, okay, will give you, in fact, the inverse of the matrix. But as I said, this is not always possible. Um, you could encounter a row of zeros, for instance, the last row or any row of zeros, um, which cannot be removed, then um, the RREF stops there. We don't have an identity matrix, and therefore the inverse does not exist. Uh, however, in those cases where it is possible, performing the elementary row operations on the identity gives you the inverse of the matrix. Let's look at an example of this um, and how this works. So let's start with this matrix A, um, and we want to find the inverse of this matrix. So in order to do, in order to proceed, the first step would be that we write the matrix A and augment uh, onto it the ide appropriate identity matrix. So let's do that. So this particular example has been uh, adopted from um, Howard Anton. Let's start um, uh, with the row operations. Um, we'll notice here 
notice here that um, remember our objective would be to take this matrix here um, on the left hand side uh, and convert it to um, the uh, identity matrix so let's start performing our row operations um, let's uh, our first row operation is going to be r2 is um, uh, minus 2r1 plus r2 uh, we are not going to change R1, so R1 is going to be R1. And then the third, row 3, is going to be minus R1 plus R3. So let's uh, let's apply those. So applying the fir the first row remains the same. Second row, as you can see, gives us this. And the third row is going to be uh, 0 here, of course, and then minus 2, and then 5, uh, minus 1, 0, and 1. So that's one iteration. Now, uh, or um, uh, one, the first column is done. Let's move further now. Um, and our next target is going to be, um, this is going to be our new pivot element. This one here is going to be our leading one. So let us proceed. So this time, R2 is, not, is going to remain unchanged. So let's write that down, 0, 1, minus 3, minus 2, 1, 0. So uh, let's see now, um, we're going to eliminate the minus 2. So R3 is going to be 2R2 plus R3, which gives us 0, 0, um, 2R2 minus 6 plus 5 is minus 1, minus 4, minus 5 here, and then 2 plus 0 is 2, and 0 plus 1 is 1. Then over here, um, R1, okay, is going to be, we're going to eliminate the 2, so it's minus 2 R2 plus R1, so it's going to be um, 1, 0, 6, and 3, 9, right, and... Uh, three minus two and zero so the next one is the final pivot element which is going to be here so we're going to multiply that by the negative sign so please make a note of that I'm going to multiply the final row by uh, the negative sign so so in other words r3 is minus r3 Careful, and that's the row we're going to be using to eliminate the others. So <clears throat> R2, the new R2 is going to be uh, 3R3 plus R2. So we'll have 0, 1, 0, proceed uh, to the last step then which is the new R1 is going to be um, minus 9 R3 plus R1 so it's going to give me 1 0 0 wait sorry uh, just a little mistake here this should be 5 Sorry, just a little mistake here. This should be 5, not 3. Okay. And so, uh, if we proceed, this will become 40. And, uh, right, so minus times this, uh, minus 18 is 16. That's correct. Okay, so it's 16 here. And the last one will be 9 plus 0 is 9. So that's... Um, so and since we have made this, if you can, if you notice here, this matrix now here is an identity matrix. So we were successful in performing elementary row operations on the target matrix, this one here, the matrix A, and we've achieved the identity, which means that this matrix here now is the inverse of A. So therefore we say that A inverse is equal to 
40, 16, 9. Sorry, just one error here. This should be minus 40 because it's uh, 9, 5, minus 9, minus 45, minus uh, plus 5. So it's going to be minus 40. Sorry about that. So this is negative 40, just to correct that. Okay, so uh, we end up with this inverse. Now you can check it, of course, yourself uh, if you wish. Um, if you multiply this A inverse by the original matrix A, should get the identity matrix. So this is how we calculate the uh, inverse of a matrix. We basically uh, perform row operations on A if we attain the elementary, um, the um, uh, identity matrix then those same row operations performed with identity will give us the inverse of the matrix. Now let's look at um, uh, where the inverse is in fact used. And, um, if I go back to the representation that we've been looking at, AX equals B, representing a system of equations. Now, if I were to multiply this system, this equation by A inverse from the left, then I would have um, this equation. Now this here product becomes the identity and the identity into X since the multiplication is possible because of the right size this becomes X again so in fact if the inverse exists it is possible to find the solution of the system of equations by multiplying the inverse into the right hand side. So let's uh, quickly do that as a, a, a quick example of that so let's look at this system of equations. Um, the equation here, the system of equations, uh, can be written as, um, of course, AX equals B clearly, where A is in fact, um, in fact, 1, 2, 3. So the system uh, AX equals B, where A is this uh, as here and B uh, as defined here. If you notice, this is the same matrix that we found the inverse of. So if I simply take uh, the inverse of this matrix, we, we say, of course, x is equal to a inverse b, which in this case is equal to. So basically, we end up with this. As you see, you will notice that this is the same matrix we just calculated the inverse of. So we just write down the inverse, multiply it by the right hand side. So if we multiply these through, we end up with this result, 67 minus 21 and minus 8. Now you can check and substitute this into the original equations and you should get the, so that is the correct uh, solution. So you know, we've looked at another method apart from the elimination methods for solving systems of equations. Uh, when the inverse exists, uh, first of all, keep in mind that this is not um, a, uh, a, a cover all type of method where uh, any size of system um, it can be applied to any size of system. First of all, it is restricted to square systems, n by n systems. Second of all, it's uh, dependent on the inverse um, or the um, coefficient matrix being non-singular, and therefore it's inverse existing, it being invertible. If that is not the case, then we cannot use the inverse, in fact, because it doesn't exist. So therefore, it is a, it is a method, but it is rather a restricted uh, method. Uh, apply can, can be applied uh, sometimes but not all the time so that's all we have to say about the inverse